watching Bria Nicole It don't take no time, can you subscribe for me though? A pretty wide smile she got bigger goals Just drop the video and I'm just here to let you know What's up YouTube? It's your girl Bria and I'm back with another video So y'all, yeah, welcome to my channel As y'all can see from that title Today we are going to a entrepreneur uh, Entrepreneur Workshop for teens I get my words together But we good now So yes that's where we going y'all Um, The time is now Yeah it's 12.38 It starts at 12 I'm sorry it's 11.38 It starts at 12 Um, And I'm still at home And it's like a 40 minute drive But <clears throat> we are about to leave Okay so y'all um, I'm in this place It's so cute in here But I don't know if I'm in the right spot. I'm so nervous. Like, I'm literally just walking around. Because I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I'm so nervous. Hi. Hey, love. Hi. Um, I'm here for a, it's an entrepreneur workshop. Do you know where that is? I don't, but it's probably in the front if it's a workshop. Okay. If, This is so cute in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared. Come on, come on. Come yeah, okay. on, let's go. <laughs> oh, this one. Here. I vlog. So, guys, I made some friends. Y'all, I'm so nervous walking in here. But this is Kari. This is. Dimitri, sorry. Dimitri. So I'm sorry. I forgot his name already. He told me like five times. But we are about to do this. It's a workshop. Um yeah. and we have to have a company basically and we're making an ad for it. So yeah, I'ma tune back in with y'all when we do something. Hey, I'm Kari. Hey, I'm Dimitri. Hey, I'm Dimitri. Like I'm not even trying to be rude like that, but she needs your head up. But I do have this friend with this hair. Okay. So let me call her up and let you know if she's available. And I'll get back to you because you need your head up. Hey girl, I saw this boy who needs hair done real bad. I was wondering if you were available. Hello. Hey girl. You said he needs his hair done real bad? That's a bet. Um, I'm gonna be on my way in like 10 minutes. Girl, you said he needs his hair done real bad. Let me see. I got edge control. I got that comb because his hair probably nappy. Hmm, let me see. All right, girl. I'm going to be there. Um, I said 10 minutes, but I lied. I'm going to be there like 20 minutes, so I'm going to see you then. So here are some of the styles that I do. I'm sure not the wigs, but you know, like this is a good style that I think that will work for you. What do you think about that? That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Thank you. Let's get I'll started. get you set up. Right. Okay. So what made you come into Beauty Works today? Uh, some girl was talking about me. <laughs> well, I'm glad that she called you because we specialize in natural hair um, and we treat different hair types. We make sure that your oil is scalp and we make sure that you have a protective style that will last at least a month or two. So, yes, please come back. Today, y'all, got my hair done at Beauty Works and she gave me some product to put in my hair. I really like her customer service. Y'all come get your hair done. Okay. Well, I just have a hair and spare that. 
first I would just like get it to my mouth. But there's so many moves right now, I don't know if you need to use the door. Well, thank you for choosing Pawson's Dark Room Service. If you haven't seen the sign outside of the door, we specialize in dry paws especially. So we have this new product. It is specialized in keeping your dog protected from the outside sun. Because when I was a kid, I mean, actually, well, I'm 20, so would that be a kid? Not a kid. Um, when I was around 10, I was doing fake YouTube channels. Like, I would have my mom's makeup, and I would be like, oh, look, I got this from Walmart. Not knowing nothing about how much makeup costs, I would say, this is $12, just random stuff, right? And I didn't really know that I was building the foundation on what I was going to be doing, like, in my career. So, yeah, I've always been very into YouTube, as well as entrepreneurship. Me and my friends, we would come up with business names, what we was going to sell. There's actually someone in the room right now that we came up with business names. We just never did it. But we were like 13 years old at the time. And so I finally started my YouTube channel. I know a lot of you guys probably want to be like influencers on social media. And there's probably something holding you back with that's caring about what people think of you or just the fear of it or you have an insecurity. You don't want to be on camera. You're shy. That was me. I had an insecurity, a big one, for years. And the moment that it got fixed was the moment I started YouTube. Like, I've been wanting to do it since I was 10. Like, I told you guys, I'll start talking about this later. But in between time, I was doing all the research. Like, I was watching all kinds of videos, makeup videos, how to start a YouTube channel, taking notes on it. I was writing it down. So I'm saying this to say, whatever you guys want to do, make sure that you are actually doing the research prior. You don't want to jump into something and then fail it and then be sad. It's different when you take all the precautions in the beginning, know what you're going to do, have your plan, your budget. <laughs> and then you'll be really good at what you do when you start it. So when I started my first channel, I my first video blew up. And you were like, wow, that's crazy because that doesn't happen for a lot of people. It was because all of the research I did prior. I knew the back to school season was going to be a good season to start a channel. So if you guys want to start channels and you haven't already, back to school season is great. What if you get a great day? So we're coming up. But right now, I'll probably start with like summer content because it's about to be summertime. Like getting ready for the summer or doing summer challenges or something. So yeah, I started, it blew, it, it blew up, and I got 10,000 subscribers in two months. So I was very consistent. Before I started, I already knew what videos I was going to have lined up. Anytime I upload a video, I already know what the next video is going to be. And I'm going to tell you guys how I do that now, because I do have a product that helps with that. So anyways, I was doing YouTube for two years until I started my first business. Like I told you guys, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Before I wanted to be a YouTuber, but then I was like, hmm, I really want to start for this now. I don't want to have the ideas anymore. I don't want to halfway start anymore. I want to actually do it. So remember, I started at 15. 16 is when I got my license, and I also saved up for a car, and I got my first job. So if you guys don't have a job, get a job, period. You should get a job so that you can get money, cash flow coming in so that you can invest it into whatever you want to do, whether that's getting a camera or starting your business. So that's what I did. I got a car. I knew I needed a car because I knew the content I wanted to film would require a car. So I asked my parents, I was like, oh, if I can bring up half of the car, can you cover the other half? And they helped. I think I had about three people in my family help put in for the other half. So I didn't pay more than anybody. But I did that off of saving my first YouTube check. That was my first time. Saving a YouTube check, that was about $400. I wasn't even paying for I mean, not. I don't want for someone who doesn't have bills, but it's not going to bills. So I had four hundred dollars, and then I was working at Walmart. Walmart was my first job, and Walmart at the time was one of the big top jobs. They had just started taking teenagers. It used to be an eighteen plus job. I was working there when I was sixteen, so I was very excited about that. I was making eleven dollars an hour. Eleven dollars an hour back then is nowhere near eleven dollars now. So, but um, I was making that, and my check from there was six hundred. I believe, so that's 600, 400, 1,000. The car that I got was 4,000, so I have an extra 1,000, right? So I was like, okay, I need to push out a lot of content. So I was a lot of YouTube videos, you know, you can pay by a weekly other job. So I got my other 600 again, and I saved up and put it towards my car. Now I was back at zero. This is all at 16 years old. I've never been the type to splurge. I've never bought, like, all the updated designer. I didn't buy the shoes, the designer, I didn't buy it. I just, even to this day, I don't spend money on that because it's not making me any money. So that's a mindset that I installed in myself very young. That if I'm going to spend this money, what can it do to bring it back to me? So if you want to be an influencer, it's a great thing to do because if I go get my hair done, I can blog it and I'm going to get paid for it. So everything that I do is an investment and a write off. I can write off me getting my hair done because it goes for my business. Serena so Rain, I'm a business. So me as a person, I'm a business. Anything that has to do with me and it's going to elevate me, make me more money, I can write that off. We didn't talk about write-offs. I don't know too much about taxes, but I do know that I can write off stuff like that. If you're doing influence, you can write off jewelry because it's adding to your image that was in 
can be a gamer, you can be on Twig. You can do hair. I know they did a hair company. Y'all look cute with y'all hairstyles. Tattoos, that's a really good one. Just content around anything real. If you are having a client, go ahead and show them you can them up. But make sure you know how to edit your work, right? Okay, so let's go back to me. When I, where was I? Getting my first car. So yeah, got my car. Boom, that's how I put it. Cross that off the list. It was a cash car, so it's not like I had a monthly payment. That's something that a lot of people do wrong. They get a payment and then they're tied down. All the interest is too high, all of that stuff. I didn't have to do that. I just went with the cash route. So I think I had to pay my own car insurance too, but I had an older car. That's a lot of like money talk. I'm, not, I'm pretty good at talking about money, but we, that's not what I do for. <laughs> so, um, okay, first business. So now I got my car. I don't have no more money except for gas. I just, I just wanted the car. Got the car, and then let's fast forward to more research. I was like, okay, time for a business. What I do, get on YouTube. How to start your first business. I learned that I needed to get a vendor because I knew what type of business I wanted to do. I did like market research on what I wanted to do, which was a boutique. And around that time, um, there wasn't that many boutiques as there is now online, so I did like the designer bonnets. I still wear those to this day. Designer bonnets, do rags. I had like cute little shoes and stuff like that, and that was my business. That first business generated me 200k in revenue within a year and a half. And then it got so overwhelming for me and me trying to do YouTube. All that I ended up closing it down. And then I went into hair. I sold hair. I still, I'm not to sell hair again, but I sold hair. And that was a really hard business to start. I'm not gonna lie. Like selling hair takes a lot of money up front. So you guys know, was I gonna still have a job? I was still working at Walmart. My first job was Sonic, but I didn't say that. So then I went to Walmart and I was paying me more. So I still had that job while I had my first business. And then COVID hit. This is when COVID had came. And this is where I made a lot of the money of the 200 was because we all at home online. So social media marketing is a really big tool. So if you guys have a business or you want to be an influencer, market online. As well as the old way, which is like business cards and like word of mouth. That's a really good way. Um, but yeah, so I was um, making viral content. I was taking pictures. I don't know if y'all know. People would have designer phone cases and take pictures of it and just like grass in the background. You ever seen that? That's what I did. I hopped on that really early and then my post was getting like 3,000 likes. With, with engagement comes sales. So like if you're scrolling and you see a really cheap case, you're probably going to go see how much it is. So you don't go online and buy it. You don't even have to know who it is. So when you're posting your content for your business, make sure it's something that will just somebody's eye. Not something that just you like. It has to be something that can go viral. A lot of people make content and no one's going to look at it because it's just not appealing. So with marketing, it's really a psychology thing, knowing what your customer likes, knowing what your target audience is. So I was doing that at a young age. Really didn't know that it was words for it. I didn't know I was marketing. I just thought I was promoting my stuff. And one thing about me, I never care how many people was liking it. I don't care how many people was looking. The comments, none of that really deters me because I know what, I know me and I know what I'm trying to do. So if you do like influencing and you get a hate comment, simply delete it and keep moving on. Because if you let that person get to you, you can be blocking your blessings. At 20, I'm making a minimum of five figures, which is a minimum of 10K a month, right? And I started around the same age as y'all. I started when I was 17, the business aspect. So let's, I closed that down. Hair, I did a whole launch. When you guys are launching businesses, make sure that you have a launch plan. So right. you have to be a plan to launch. Because that's really going to make a break you. Um, your brand voice, how you're going to come off to your audience and all that stuff. And as far as influencing, that was always like my fallback thing. Like now it's habitual to me, so it's a habit to just pull out my camera. <laughs> it's just a habit to just pull out my camera and just record anything because every single thing is content. If y'all are in school, like high school, you don't need a camera. But like take your phone, do school vlogs, because remember, that's what blew me up. I was doing all types of school vlogs. I was doing like public interviews with people at school. The options are endless. All you have to do is just actually do it. So let's get into what was this? Oh, my hair business. I wanted. To, I did a lot of little campaigns. Sales are cool, but never do too many sales because now you come off as like cheap. You don't want to always have a sale. But me personally, I always make it seem like they're getting a deal, even. If they're really not, like, 
buy one, get one free. You're really paying for both, y'all. Honestly, you're paying for whatever you're paying for. It's just marked at a different price. Um, what else can I say? Influencing is a really big part of my entrepreneurial journey because I do have a following. So it doesn't make things easier because I'm, influencers come out with businesses all the time and they're terrible. No one buys. So it's really, it goes down to actually knowing the ins and outs. It's back to research. With anything that you guys do, research. And I do, I want you guys to start now. <clears throat> if you have an idea, execute on that idea. Don't just keep it in your brain and be like, oh, I'm going to start when I turn 18. No, start now. Because when you turn 18, you're going to regret not starting when you do 16. Because that whole two years, you could have been learning things. Versus just waiting for a perfect time. There's no perfect time to start anything. I wish I started before I fixed my insecurity, but that's easier said than done. If you're insecure about something, it's easier to say you're gonna embrace it than to actually do it. So if it's something that's fixable, then I would try to speed up that process of that. Um, doing your, your research on your content. So I do lifestyle, beauty vlogs, stuff like that. So at the time, what I did was I would type in like my favorite YouTubers, go to their most popular, and literally recreate that. I would never copy, but you get inspired by the content. That's how I do. I knew like, why are all these girls having back to school series and those videos are going crazy? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I planned the first day of school. I, I woke up early. I started off my video as if I was already a YouTuber. I started my first video saying, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. They're probably like, back? What's your first video? But I, I was already living like I was me now. You know what I'm saying? So just put yourself in the shoes. Don't start off shy or as a beginner. You know what I'm saying? You have to act like you've been here before with everything. I've been here before, before I've done this. Okay? So, yeah, just start now. Any idea you have, plan it. Write down your launch. If you don't know how to launch anything, look it up. That's what I did to this day. That's what I did. Now, we're going to go back into influencing because that's really like my favorite thing. To be consistent. Consistency is key when it comes to influencing. It's key to influencing. So what I do now is I have a planner, and I do have some of you guys are interested in them, is I write down my following goal for this month, then I write down all of my content ideas. I do this all in one day. It takes me a minimum of like four hours. I kid you not. But you have to put in the work for the return that you want. So I write down my goals, how I'm going to reach those goals. If you just write goals, you want to write how, it's so if I want to get 10K um, subscribers, how am I going to get that? Okay, I'm going to make a schedule for myself. If I have school, I'm going to make sure I film at least two school vlogs a week, and then after school, I do an after school routine. And now I know my content I need for the month. I go into the weeks of the month, and I write it down there. So when the day comes, all I have to do is open up my planner. I already know what I'm supposed to do today. A lot of us, we be like, oh, I know I need to do this and this and this. I'm not going to do it today. And say you don't do it today. You be like, okay, I'm going to just do it tomorrow. Tomorrow comes. You don't do it tomorrow. You're like, okay, I'm going to do it the next day. And you just never do it because it just gets pushed back, 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 back. So just go ahead and plan things out. That's something I've been doing more this year, and I've accomplished more this year than I have in the whole journey of me doing entrepreneurship, influencing, because I've planned more now. So that's a really big one. Then I have any questions. Or confusing. Ask y'all questions. Go ahead. Like when you said you write down a plan, like how do you plan your growth? Like how do you control that? Like how much you're growing? Um, you control it by what quality you're gonna put out. What are you gonna learn for your next video, your next reel, or business campaign? Um, what else? I do a lot of market research. I just look at other people in my industry, see what they're doing, what's performing well for them, and if it's performing well for at least three people, why wouldn't it perform good for you? But if it doesn't perform good for you, you're doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I do it. I do a lot of research, writing down, writing down different ideas, and making my own. I never talk. I make it my own type of video. I have a question. <clears throat> Um, I know you talked about, you know, getting your uh, your following there, but how do you keep people engaged? My following? Yeah. Well, um, on Instagram and YouTube. Okay. So, I make sure that I know what's quality, what's produced as quality. So, you know, I do that is my research. I look at, like, the other content creators that I'm trying to aspire to be like and see what type of angle are they using. When you're doing a real, use different specific angles that you see performing well for other people. Instead of putting your phone right here, 
and then just doing all of your schemes in one in one angle, I'll switch up the angles because that's what I see other people do. Um, with people, people, we don't have high engagement. If we if we look at something online, they don't catch our attention within the first three seconds, like a real, you're gonna scroll. So make sure if you get into the hook or whatever you're talking about within the first ten seconds, that's what you scroll. I'm say five five seconds of the video, even on YouTube. Like, you know, a lot of people on YouTube do like the previews in the beginning, like they show what they're doing this whole video. They'll be like, ooh, what part is that? I want to see what part this is, I'm going to keep watching. Yeah, like me, I put like funny moments at the beginning of my videos, and people want to see whatever moment that is. So they'll go ahead and watch the whole video. Okay. I know you said YouTube is like a part of your life, but how do you balance your personal life and your business? Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I don't want to make something business-wise like a video, I have to plan it out. I have to. Because if I don't, it's going to be mixed in. Like, I do business stuff every day. So if I'm going to plan to do, like, a shopping haul or something like that, I have to actually write down what day I'm going to do it so I don't do nothing business-related during these hours. So to separate it, like, personal, like, friendship and stuff, that's all on camera. Everything is on camera. But if it's something you don't want on camera, you just have to fit into your schedule. I'll go real quick. It's a quick question. How do you balance doing um, phone content and camera content? Oh, that's a good question. So, uh, usually, okay, short form content and long form. So, my, my camera is long form, and then my, my phone is short. So, what I do is, if I'm doing a whole video, I did the other day. I did a self care video, and I wanted to do a reel of me making my flower bouquet for Instagram. And then I had my camera out because I'm vlogging. So, I literally put my camera up. Hey guys, I'm about to make a real, real quick. Go, up, go see it on my Instagram. That's cross promotion. And then I would just set up and do it in front of the video. That's what I do. Now, if I'm out in public, it's the same thing. Like if me and my friends are going to Atlanta and we're just going to take pictures or something and I'm going to record it, I'll make sure to get my vlog, my, what is this, my phone content with it and then immediately back to the channel. Switch back and forth. Or at the same time. Thank you. How do you know who you're talking to when you're doing these like business? Like how do you know that whatever you're saying is going to reach who you want to reach? Okay. So you have to know what your business is to begin with. So if you're doing something that's catered towards kids, you have obviously talk in more of a kid manner. So in the planning process of your business, you need to know who you're trying to target who you're trying to target and talk to them as such. So if you're doing graphic design and you want to target like higher end businesses, then you will come off way more professional, way more simple, not a lot of popping, you know, colors and stuff like that for a brand new thing. You know what And then research. Everything go back to that, honestly. Like if you're targeting um, the age ranges, oh, and please don't ever say I want to target everyone. Everyone can't be your target audience. If you're targeting everyone, you're targeting no one because it's like, what are they talking about? Who are they talking to? So if you're talking to an older audience, you'll talk in a different way. I don't even know how to explain it. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. a different tone of voice. Yeah. yeah. I like to say it as a brand voice. Like me, I'm more of a, okay, girl, let's get to this content, let's get to this money. That's my voice for my brand. Like I use the same emojis consecutively because I know exactly who I'm talking to. And my age range is really 18 to 24. And never do it too big of a gap.
make sure that she's getting that content for it. Because there's like, if it's a rule, that stays the rule. Okay. You can't just be like, well, you can block, but just don't be on your phone. Right. She's gonna do it anyway. Right. So yeah, I would just separate it. Okay. Thank you. Um, if it's okay um, to answer your question, I just think about me when I was 13, and I was really cool with my teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, another thing that I would think about, it depends on the person. Um, if a person is really cool with their teachers and, you know, their teachers are really engaged and they're doing their schoolwork, you know, they're not causing any trouble. Um, I think if, as long as it's, it, I'm sorry, as long as if it's okay, like with the environment, um, I think that would be another thing to look at too. Um, just, you know, to make sure that everything is good, you know, and it's not like an extra add-on to another problem. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Hi, did you have a question? No. Why? Well, I was just going to. All right, so much. You have like an ad creator? Do I have a what? An ad creator? An ad creator? It's all coming out of my brain. I do have an assistant, though. She helps with a little bit of stuff. And when you guys do get into your business, the later you will have a route and get help. Because you can only do it so much. But she helps me with like ideas, but as far as like the creation, because I'm a face with my brand, I have to do it. Yeah. Can you talk about, um, I think you talked about a lot of your product uh, based businesses, but I know you also have like your service based business that's where you're teaching other people. I think it's important for them to know that you don't always have to necessarily sell a product, but you can also just help other people too, because I know you do that too. Okay, that's just reminding me. When I was in college, I did last year. So that's service based too. But right now I sell digital products, which helps people who want to be influencers or simply start a business. I'm not too deep into the entrepreneur teaching yet, but it's more so like influencing because that's something that I've mastered. So what, if, what you guys can do, if you're good at anything, you could write a people on it, you can start a course on it, and you just have to know how to promote it to the people who are on social media. So that could be, what's a good, what's a good example? If you do know how to do hair or know how to do lashes, you could sell a course on how to do that. How to braid. Somebody wants to know how to braid. They'll just go ahead and buy a quick little course, anything like that. So right now I do the digital products. What else do I have? Um, I'm helping my like, girls, not one-on-one, -on -one, but it's a group type of member thing where I help them with being influencers, getting to know the ins and outs on it and stuff like that. So my advice to you guys, if, you know, if you're good at anything, if that could be anything, you write an ebook or Course Write that down, y'all. That's good stuff. If there's any skill that you have, mm -hmm. you can create an ebook or a course on it, or you can create a group to train and teach people what you know. You do not have to be an expert at something to be able to teach somebody else up to the point that you know. Because there's somebody who's starting at zero, and you may be at five or ten in skill level. You don't have to be at ten, but if you're at five, that person at zero wants to know how to get to five. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about. And that's something you don't actually have to buy inventory for. It's a digital product. So it's yeah. not something that you have to, you know, keep in your house or keep in a warehouse. Um, so. And it's passive income. That's something you can do one time and you pay for it for however long. Content. <laughs> so I have a like open page. If you want to be able to read that, it belongs to. It's really like an actual planner that you would like to store. But it's strictly for social media content. So it works even if you have a business. You can plan out your business content. What's included is self-reflection questionnaires, because it's always great to be aware of you as, as yourself to work on it. Vision board, where you can put you can print pictures for it. Monthly affirmations. I have six of them throughout the whole book. I like you can write your own monthly affirmations. I do have six within the whole book. A follower growth tracker, goal questionnaires, sponsorship trackers. Content idea boards, blank month calendars, weekly planning, weekly reflection, monthly reflection, comparison questionnaires, journal pace, and a password keeper in that. I have a how to stay on track, so if you read this, you'll know how to consistently use your planner. You're not getting it and not opening it. So I do advise you to read those pages. This is um, the self reflection I have to do at the beginning of your six months. So it's a six month plan, and then there's, there's one at the end that you compare from the beginning of your six months starting to book. So this is your vision board. Yeah. Oh. 
This is one of the affirmations I have. In six months, you can either be in the same place or a better place. And that was my favorite one. That's my Pittsburgh. So here's the follower tracker where you put your goals and stuff. So you put your current count and you put your goal count. I have two blank ones for whatever platform that you want to do. And then you have your goals for the month and your affirmations for the month. And you have to look at some sponsorship trackers. You can have sponsors for under 10K, y'all. You don't need a lot of followers for that either. Then this is content ideas for TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and this is the calendar. I utilize this a lot. I wish I brought my actual planner so y'all can see how I plan mine, but this is full. When I'm doing my stuff, this is full. You have notes on the side. And then this is my favorite part of the planner when you put your post, I mean your create, what you need to create for Monday, what you need to post on Monday. What you need to create on Tuesday, what you need to post on Tuesday. So if you don't fill this out and you fail at your business or at your influencing journey, it's really your fault because you should have wrote it all down so when it's time to come, when Wednesday comes, you already know what you're going to create and post for that day. So that's pretty much what it is, and it just goes like that for six months. Then it has the craft card tracker in the end, and that's what I offer with my planner, I help with consistency, which is how you actually grow on any platform. All right, y'all, so the entrepreneur workshop is over. It was definitely very fun. This is where we were. This carousel is so cute, first of all. Um, that's how it looked in here. <laughs> y'all, I was really nervous, really nervous, really nervous. But I had a good time. Like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I would definitely come back. And um, I'm going to put the address of where I was in, like, um, on the screen so that y'all can see. And she said they have, like, day passes for, like, $15. And it's really cute in here. So y'all should definitely come check it out. Yo, it don't take no time, can you subscribe for me though? A pretty wide smile, she got bigger goals. Just drop the video and I'm just here to let you know. Yo, I